Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by BooksGrowBusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done and published to educate consumers, grow their businesses, and to leave a legacy. I'm doing a series of spotlights on remarkable business intermediaries from across the country. And joining me on this segment is Jack Chung. He's the vice president of BTI Group based in San Francisco. Jack, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mark. We're glad to be here. Jack, tell me a little bit about your work and specifically, who are the types of clients that you specialize in helping? Great. So I, I help uh, small business owners uh, realize their equity in the, the, the businesses and companies that they've built over the years. And uh, I love working with small business owners, uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, they are extremely interesting. Uh, it's always good to hear how they got into the business and, and uh, you know, get a get a really in-depth look at how their businesses work. Um, you know, that that's that definitely what keeps me interested in what I do. Um, most of my clients are, I, I like to call a lot of them corporate refugees. So these guys are C-level executives that uh, either work for large companies or, you know, have owned their own companies before. And they're looking to either exit the company they're at now or acquire a, uh, a small business or a company for them to run and, and build equity for themselves. Wow, this is very serendipitous because you mentioned a couple of really important things here. Um, first of all, I that's why I do this show because I love hearing the stories about business owners and how they created what it is that they 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 do. And you mentioned also the 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 great resignation, which was the inspiration of this this uh, whole series of interviews. Um, let's start with that. Is is it really with the with the Great resignation. Is it really a good time to buy a business today? And is it a good time to sell a business? Has these two tidal waves sort of come together? I think there's a lot of opportunities right now for someone that has the entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I think, you know, this actually started, I would say, even prior to the pandemic. You know, we, we were seeing back in 2008, 2009, after the housing crash, that, you know, People are going back to school, getting a second degree, getting their graduate degrees. And what that has caused uh, or seemingly caused is there's a flood of very highly educated um, uh, potential employees coming out and making the industry a lot more competitive. And I have a lot of um, corporate guys who are in their late 40s, uh, maybe early 50s, that are, it's much harder for them to find jobs these days that are going to replace the kind of income that they need. A lot of our uh, uh, clients have families, uh, kids that are about to go to college and college isn't getting any cheaper. And so a lot of them have a certain level of income that they're going to need to replace if, if they were laid off or if they left the company. And I think these days, you know, I think people want to build equity for themselves. You know, a lot of these guys have worked for companies for 20, 20 years, 15, 20 years, and they have a lot of good experience. And now I think they're looking to utilize that experience to help themselves build equity versus the company that they're at. And so I do think there is a great market for entrepreneurs who have always thought about, you know, starting their own companies. I think there's a lot of good opportunities out there. Um, you know, in our business, I'm going to say we, we've had some of our best years over the last two years. And I think that's a culmination of uh, there's baby boomers who are, who are near retirement age and they just need to get out. And uh, I think after a pandemic, you kind of refocus kind of what your, 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 your goals are in life. Um, you know, a lot of these people, they don't want to work another five or 10 years to rebuild business, but they have really solid, healthy companies. And it's only because of the pandemic that they've suffered a little bit. And I think it's a great opportunity for um, uh, someone to come in, take over the reins and be able to, to sustain some of that growth going forward. A lot of our companies are seeing kind of a check mark um, a rebound these days where, you know, they, they took it on the chin, you know, during the pandemic, but now that things are starting to, to calm down, you know, we're seeing a great, you know, a lot of them have great 20, 2011s uh, and 2022 seems to be uh, doing extremely well as well. I think, you know, going through these recessions, you know, it, it's, there, there, there's good and bad. I think the companies that were kind of on the fringe and, uh, you know, maybe probably should have been out of business long ago, wouldn't, can't survive the, 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 the pandemic uh, or any kind of recession. And I think companies that have come out 
of the pandemic sometimes are, are, are better and stronger companies going forward. Uh, and I think these challenge, you know, when, when, when the, when the business is fat, you know, you don't really focus on kind of operational things and things that you can improve efficiencies and things like that. When you hit a pandemic, everyone is looking for ways of um, cutting some of that fat and, you know, even for, for office spaces, you know, we've learned to, to, to work without office spaces and, um, and I think business hasn't really suffered. And so I think sometimes when you do things the same way for a long time, you just keep doing it that way, even though there might be a better way of doing things. And I think sometimes a, a pandemic or a recession really kind of refocuses a business owner's um, mentality to, to really look at their books and, and look at the things that they're doing and what they can be more efficient at. Let's talk about the seller for a minute. Sure. Uh, as you mentioned, they've been running a business for a long time, probably thinking growth, growth, growth all these years, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and maybe not even considering uh, the selling part of it. And if this is the first time they're they're selling, um, how experienced or how knowledgeable are they when they finally reach out to you? What uh, what kind of questions you know, do they ask, I, and and are they I, unprepared? Yeah, I, I'm I'm very surprised. I mean, most of the times people are selling this is the first time that they're going to be selling a company or, or the only time they're going to be selling a company in their lifetime. And I'm actually surprised that a lot of times when I speak to business owners, many of them didn't know that they could be done. You know, they just thought, Oh, you know, unless you're a public company or you're a company like Twitter or, or Facebook, we would want to buy a company like mine. And I think that is a part of the education that we're trying to get out because I talk, I talk to business owners all the time that just said, Oh, well, I was just going to roll up my, my company once I was done, you know, when I'm ready to retire and just, you know, go, go off and in, into retirement. And so I think there is a lot of education needed in this industry. Um, there are people that just didn't never thought that a business can be sold who would want to buy a job for themselves. And I think that that is um, contrary to, um, uh, to what they think. There's, there's a lot of people out there looking to um, be their own boss, you know, and, and, and I have to say, not everyone is made out to be an entrepreneur. It, it is not an easy uh, industry to be in. Uh, but I definitely think that uh, sellers need to be a little bit more educated on what they can actually what their businesses are worth. And, and it's, it's basically an asset of theirs. Uh, and, and it can be sold. So see, that's a strange thought. They're just going to roll up the company, didn't even consider any, like what a lost opportunity that is. So more, let's talk more about that. Are there any other kind of crazy myths or misconceptions people have in regards to selling a business today? Yeah. Um, what do you hear out there? Well, I think a lot of business owners also feel like they have to be the one that finances the transaction for their the, the buyers. And that may have been the case, you know, 20 years ago, there just wasn't a whole lot of uh, lending products out there for um, entrepreneurs looking to, to buy a business. Now, uh, our company works very closely with uh, many SBA banks, so small business, business and administration uh, banks that offer very, very attractive loans. When I first started in this industry in, I'm going to say, early 2007, 2008, you know, these loans were at about 11% interest and people were still gobbling them up. Uh, today, we're able to put someone into a small business administration loan. Uh, you're probably looking at a five or 6% interest. Um, and, and I think that is something that uh, a lot of business owners don't know about that. Hey, look, uh, traditionally, it was always seller financed. You know, someone comes in with a down payment and they finance the remaining balance. These days, we can almost cash out typically a, a business owner 80, 90% of the proceeds at close. Uh, and that way, you know, they don't have to worry about the success of the business going forward. Um, the better thing about this is it's government backed. And so the banks love doing these loans because the federal government will guarantee up to 75% of these loans for the banks. And so I think we have a lot more options for cashing out a, buy, uh, a seller these days. In addition, with financing, we're able to kind of tap the highest market value for your business, right? Uh, with, a, with, a, with a loan that can be paid off over 10 years. Uh, and that way utilizes a uh, you basically the business income to satisfy that debt service going forward. Uh, and so I think a lot of business owners, they don't understand that they've been too busy running their business and they just think, Hey, you know, we're either going to have to finance this and I don't really want to do that. And, you know, they're ill prepared. So I usually say business owners, if they're thinking about getting out of the business, we need to start preparing your business for sale, probably two or three years ahead of time. Um, when we sell a business, it's always a look back. You know, we, we, it's hard for me to sell potential, but it's easy for me to sell, uh, sell historical 
numbers. And so we always tell sellers that, hey, if you are thinking of, you know, being out of the business in, in three to five years, you need to start planning that two to three years before your exit. Uh, and that way we can help clean up any financials, uh, that uh, financial statements that you have, and really kind of prepare that business for the best possible marketing going forward. Great insights and, and really exciting uh, news on financing. Jack, what inspired you to become a business <laughs> intermediary? Like what got you started in this field? You, you, you know, um, I uh, got my real estate license uh, fairly early, um, you know, right when I started college because my mom was a real estate broker. And, um, you know, I went to college, helped my mom out, uh, you know, part time in her business. And afterwards, I got right into real estate with her. So I did residential real estate as well as uh, commercial real estate. But it really didn't, um, you know, I did that for a few years and those times were good. You know, those were when, you know, you put up a home for, for, for sale and you had 12 offers, cash offers, you know, in two weeks. But I really didn't um, feel like I was using anything I learned in college. Really, you know, I went to school for international business and finance and I realized, you know, if I wanted to do real estate, you know, I, I really didn't necessarily need to go to college. It's great to go to college. I love the experience, but um, you didn't really need a degree to do what I did. And so I think I got a little bit burned out working after hours. Uh, you know, you're always working uh, opposite hours from your clients. So when they're home or on the weekends, and I was really craving something that, um, that I got a little bit more um, uh, use of my education, or at least a little more interesting. And so I started looking around, um, you know, and, and I found this uh, company on Monster, if uh, you still remember the Monster uh, sites. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, hey, M&A, that sounds interesting. You needed a real estate license because in California, we're governed under the DRE versus the um, uh, SEC. And so we don't need, um, uh, don't need a trading license or anything like that. And um, when I got into the business, um, it was extremely interesting. You know, when I first got into the business, my goal was to find a company that I can see myself uh, operating for the next five or 10 years. And that was really kind of one of my goals when I first started. What I learned is um, it's a hard business. And, you know, entrepreneurs don't have it easy. When I was young, I saw, you know, family members that own companies and, you know, people that ran restaurants and man, they live in big houses, you know, drive nice cars, but you rarely see how much work goes into to, to every small business. Um, and so it really opened my eyes on how dedicated some of these entrepreneurs are. You know, I had clients that, you know, work 50, 60 hour weeks, and that's just the way that, that they were built and they couldn't see it any other way. Uh, and I realized, you know, I, I may not be made out for entrepreneurship. Um, you know, I don't know if I wanted to put in the 70 hour weeks and whatnot, but they made really good income. Um, but it was really the, just being able to see the, the under the hood of a lot of different businesses. You know, I've sold uh, company, small businesses all the way up to, you know, $10 million companies. And uh, it really is um, interesting to see how these entrepreneurs have made it work. Um, and I've had entrepreneurs that, you know, immigrated here, uh, didn't speak any English, and then they built a $20 million company, you know, over the last 30 years. Um, and it really is impressive. I mean, I, I, I have to say, um, I used to think I would be an entrepreneur, but, um, you know, they're, they're, they're a different animal. They're, they're definitely a different animal. Uh, you and I wish we, vicariously through, it, there the, you go. And your curiosity <laughs> is, is such a great match for this, this yeah. business. Cause you yeah. get to, <laughs> to I mean, I, I, I learned more about, like I sold a plastic bag company that stole t-shirt bags. And now I know, you know, the thickness of bags and who <laughs> uses certain types of bags. Um, it, it's interesting, but you also get a lot of, uh, I call it jeopardy knowledge. <laughs> so never a dull moment. Never, never, never. Jack, for folks listening now who are considering selling a business, or maybe there are some folks that, that say, I want to talk to Jack because I'm looking for, for some businesses Absolutely. to buy. Maybe he has a list for me. Absolutely. How can those folks find you, connect with you, and learn more? Well, they can definitely check out our website. Our company has typically typically has about a couple hundred listings listed uh, internally on our website, and they can check it out at www.com business-team.com, so B-U-S-I-N-E-S-S-T-E-A-M.com. Uh, they can also give me a call anytime, 415-436-2000. Uh, 
415-930-4323. That goes directly to me, uh, 415-930-4323. And uh, my offer to all small business owners is, you know, give me a call if you're interested in just understanding what your business might be worth on the market. We'll provide you a opinion of value based on comparable sales of similar companies of similar size. And then I think a lot of business owners need that information to that kind of decide where their next uh, steps are, right? If your company's worth half a million, it might be a very different plan um, going forward versus if you needed a million dollars. Um, we usually like to establish that for our clients, no obligation on your behalf to sign up with us or, or continue with us. It really is just so we can provide them a piece of information to allow them to plan their next steps. Uh, for business buyers, you know, we're more than happy to work with you. Give us a call. Let us know kind of what companies you're looking for. They might be around immediately, or we can put you in our database so that in the future, if a company comes up that fits what your, your needs are, we'll, we can reach out. Jack, this has been terrific. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to share with my audience today, and I wish you continued success for you and for all of your clients. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, anytime, um, I'm more than happy to help out any of your, your listeners. That was Jack Chung, Vice President of BTI Group out of San Francisco. And this segment's been brought to you by BooksGrowBusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done to educate consumers, grow their businesses, and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for joining me.